I thought this would be a, an ideal time, whilst I've got this LT230 apart, to show you how it all works, now it goes together. Now let's go through the, 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 the motions, if you see what I mean. So this shaft here comes out of your gearbox. This is, in this case, it's an LT77. It drives this gear here, the input gear. Now, just be wary, and probably you all know by now, but some of the early transmissions didn't have holes in the gear to lubricate the spline. And I'll, like I said, at the end of this, I'll, I'll show you what spline wears like. But um, even if you haven't got the, the holes in the gear, you can obtain this little device here. We've got this from Ashcroft, and it was a Land Rover fix, and it goes in the gear so behind here is a cavity oil used to get splash fed into the top here that's why it's got top on it and then was fed down through this hole here and there was a left hand thread on there so it was like forcing oil into the spline what a complicated way to do something where it only needed four holes drilling but that's Land Rover for you so our main shaft drives the gear. This gear drives this intermediate shaft. This intermediate shaft runs on this pin here. This pin would go from this side here. There is an awful lot of torque and twist on that shaft and that's why the, the transfer cases leak here. All right where that pin goes through. Again we'll do that in different videos because it's easier. But now we're coming up so therefore with these taper bearings set properly, with this clearance set properly in here, and this on a nice new spline, the only play you're going to get is between the gear teeth here and here. Negligible. Hardly anything. Bugger all. So next stage, we've got that nice and tight. We come back down to our differential. This is our centre differential, and also the high and low gears here. Now the high and low gears are selected by this dog clutch here. This is the, the high range, this is the low range. The low range as we've discussed earlier doesn't change its ratio, it's always the same but uh, apparently we have to be wary if there's different size widths of gears. They did do wider ones on some models so we, before we start messing about changing ratios we have to be careful of that. Now, if we want to select uh, a gear we move this in and out of high or low range you see look there we go so that's that's low uh, low high range and that's low range we'll put it in neutral at the moment and then we can see what happens to the box because I've got two flanges on here I don't know if you can see clearly let's move the camera ever so slightly down a bit is that going to help probably so in neutral if I try and turn this you can see the whole assembly here is turning with this turning here. There's a spline on the inside of this collar. So when we turn in it, if we want to lock that gear, wait a minute, <laughs> let's see if we can do it without it all falling apart. There. If we want to lock that gear into high range, now power is coming down this shaft up through this gear, which is driving this gear which is driving this gear and now that shaft is locked it's putting power going this way All right. now the reason why it's locked is quite simple it's not diff lock it's because the power is split 50-50 via this, this outfit here so the, there's power 50% going this way and 50% going this way in the middle of here as we've seen before on, on, on numerous jobs, there is a cross piece, or well, some, there's a cross piece, there are actually two individual pieces, but sometimes you can get a solid cross. And it's the power, so when this is being driven by here, all the way through this body, the, the power is transmitted through this cross piece, and inside here are two sun and planet wheels. And what it try and does is, is trying to, I'm going to try and turn this without messing about, but those should be free to move if you see what I mean. I'm going to knock everything out. But people think that 
the splines are one well well they're not really they're not really uh, let's let's just reset this up again and I'll try and explain something about this this centre diff and how it so works. So last night I was trying to explain how a differential worked, but I put the, I put the old unit in here, the 1.3, back into its casing. So you can you can see now that when it's in neutral, both gears can turn freely. It isn't until we select high range like that or low range like that that we will get drive to the flanges when it's in neutral we get no drive here and we get no drive there is that clear good now people as we mentioned earlier where does the clonking in my drivetrain come from well one thing to eliminate is the prop shot is the uh, the differentials itself so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you one that's acceptable it's not perfect, but it's acceptable. So, bearing, you might be able to hear this more than you can see, but can you see me turning the, the flange here? And you see this is not turning? That's acceptable. If it's really turning quite a lot, you've got to take the differential apart and have a look inside and check all the splines here that goes into you differential unit here because I've taken one apart for you I don't know why I bother sometimes I don't know but this is inside the differential so as I was trying to explain the other day that power is coming through let's see there's our gears look there's our gears down there so this part of the differential and this part are mated together but there is a spline on the in inside so this piece locks the high gear to the low gear which locks this here all right so you that's it at the moment like that it's in neutral so both gears can turn independent when this is locked in it will drive this body this is the counter part of that body here it's bolted together so drive then as this is spinning round it's turning this whole unit now you can probably see what happens we've got some Sun and planet wheels in here but you can't see the other one because they didn't put it in yet see this is this this spline here would be attached to the rear output shaft here so therefore when we turn this this would be the amount of play you can see you can see this one just moving this one's a bit tighter because this was a, almost a brand new one when you change the gears in here the gears aren't bedded in so they can be a bit notchy you know they'll go dink, 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 a bit too tight if you're ever shimming these up by changing the little shims on here please be aware to <laughs> to follow the precise instructions because if you set them too tight the differential can overheat all right so these the, the shims that go on here are selectable and what that means is you can you see the gear here you can put it further out or further deeper into mesh so when you tighten these two pieces together it's really going to clamp tight and then this diff won't work you need to have it free running all right that's that's the way it works but basically as you saw earlier when you turn this shaft you can see here there's no play in this one at all because this is linked to the opposite number of here which is linked to the teeth here which is linked to the shaft there so it can't can't turn but when you get them a little bit older like this one you will get a little bit you will get a little bit of play it's acceptable but if you were turning this like quarter of a turn well that's a little bit too much all right so try that if you've got a clunky transfer case with the prop shaft disconnected try and turn these it doesn't and, and try and feel to see if the flanges are turning try and turn them both together and it, it's one of those things you can only experience by feeling 
if when you're turning these you've got a hell of a lot of clunk it's usually because the spline in here is finished or the spline on the shaft so in this last section well. what causes no drive in your LT230 well these gears if these are broken the only way you can drive your car is with diff lock on usually all right so watch out for that you can, you, see, you can easily tell it because you put your hands on the flanges and both turn there's no drive you put it into diff lock with that little ring going across the splines at the front you've got drive so it has to be the diff lock uh, the other cause of concern is the spline on the input shaft this one here going to your input gear here notice how nice and clean those splines are same as this this is a brand new shaft watch me we'll not get it on right but um, they are a bit tricky to to get on like that no play at all none none at all now usually what we find is splines like this can you see how bad they are they don't look too bad until you look at them end on maybe, maybe that can maybe you can see them better there they're absolutely chewed to death this is an LT77 thing is corresponding the corresponding teeth on the gear will be worn as well and the common sort of idea is oh well I'll just put a new gear on and that will be cured but really it doesn't cure it at all <laughs> all you're doing is transferring the wear from these teeth into your new gear which is a complete waste of time it needs a shaft now whilst we're looking at that one other cause of a catastrophe on the LT230 is for you to put this gear in backwards they will go in both ways right they will go in both way around and they will fasten up exactly the same except Let's get that there. if you put this say, say for example this is the the back plate of the uh, transmission so there's the back these PTO drive teeth always face this plate you can see how the gear is offset it's not in the middle there's a bearing there's a bearing it's offset if you put this backwards the tooth pattern here the tooth the teeth are only touching on this little surface area here don't ask me how many times I've seen that it just chews them to bits choose choose both gears to bits that needs a new intermediate gear and uh, an input gear so it's good night Vienna for that uh, just be careful now a top tip when you fit in these uh, transfer cases one of the things I like to do is assemble your gear again put it the right way around this this to the prop the rear the rear axle remember that I don't fit this gear until the transfer case is in all right even though I've got a jack and a lift to put the transfer case in I always put that piece in last for the simple reason it's so much easier to get the transfer case in and then put this on the spline because if you were imagining where are we now are we down here look you see there's there's a spline look there's a shaft and you're gonna try and get that onto there I'm not exaggerating this is this is how it is sometimes there it's on right? you're under the car lifting your transfer case up and you're cussing and swearing you can't get the bloody thing in and you're trying to turn the shaft and hold it up at the same time forget it you can make a very simple support out of wood to go around the base of your transfer case and onto a trolley jack you just have to use a bit of imagination that's all it doesn't take that much but by leaving the, the uh, gear out until the last you can then get it onto the the uh, the bolts or the, or the or the studs whichever's sticking out 
then fit that, it's a dream. They do fit really easy. And uh, case, uh, and, and of course, I never fit the brake drum or the back plate until it's time, you know, once the transfer case is in. Just saves that bit more weight, all right? So usually what I do is I take the drum off, get it out of the way, because you've got to take the prop shaft off, take the drum off, and then undo the four bolts for the back plate and tie it up with some tie wraps out the way so that means you don't have to undo the handbrake cable. Easy, isn't it? So that's it. No driving your LT230 or knocking noises. It can be quite simple, but it's very rare it's gear teeth. Not unless you put the gear in the wrong way around. <laughs> anyway, best of luck with that if you're ever doing one. But that's how they work. <coughs> kind of simple really, aren't they?